So you've got your one wheel GT and you love the thing. You've been riding for hundreds, if not thousands of carefree miles with this bad boy. Then one day, one awful, fateful day, you drop off a curb, board shuts off, won't turn back on. What am I gonna do? Well, here's your options. As of right now, you can email Future Motion support, wait for them to get back to you. They'll reach out, say what's wrong, here's what's wrong. They say, we need to see your board back here at the shop. They send you a shipping label, you send it on back to them. They get the board, they evaluate it, they decide what needs to be repaired. Typically, the most common thing that needs to be repaired once you break your board is gonna be the controller module. That's a little computer in the front here which controls everything. They're gonna send you a bill. How much is it gonna be? Who knows? Prices aren't posted, but it's gonna be not super cheap. You gotta pay for shipping there, you gotta pay for shipping back. Ends up being a whole thing. You get your board back, and boom, you've got your GT back. Kind of a bit of a process. And trust me, I've been through this process many, many a times. I'm pretty sure around here at the Flow Life, we've broken more boards than anyone else. So very familiar with this process. But what if I were to tell you that finally, there is another option for your broken board. Welcome to the GTV drop-in kit from Float Wheel. Ba, 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 cue the crazy music, oh my gosh. It's everything everyone's been waiting for. So this is basically a drop-in controller repair kit for the GT. Let's say your controller breaks, needs to be replaced. You take this new controller, you drop it right in, screw in a few things, no soldering required. It does come with a new BMS as well to pair it to, and you drop that BMS right in, you're up and running, good to go. You gotta do a little bit of programming, you gotta do a little bit, and we'll go talk to Keaton, who did the install on this, to talk about exactly how that was from a mechanical standpoint, and we'll also talk to Nico a little bit about a software standpoint on uh, how easy it is to set up once you're all said and done. But once you're all said and done, you've got yourself a fully functional GT that's actually running on VESC now instead of Future Motion software, which is pretty darn cool. It's very tunable. There's a lot more you can do. It's much more easy to repair it. Uh, there's a lot of benefits there, but this isn't a video on why you should switch to VESC. This is a video on a new way to repair your one wheel GT. So let's go talk to Keaton and uh, see how the install went. Keaton, what? you installed the float wheel drop-in kit, the GTV yeah. drop-in kit. <laughs> that went in a little harder than I thought it was going to. The people want to know, how did the installation go? How did the product arrive? Uh, sort of what was the process for putting it in on a scale of one through 10? How easy was it? Run it down, lay it out so they can play it out. Uh, it arrived in a small box. I lost the box. The oh. box is like this big. It's like this big. Came with some packaging. Also came with rubber gloves, suggested to use rubber gloves when installing it. That may or may not work for you. I used rubber gloves because it said to. <laughs> yeah, you should definitely so. use rubber gloves. If the package says use yeah. rubber gloves, use rubber gloves, right? You've built all of our VESC boards around here. So you're very experienced with building VESC boards. Yeah. How was the install compared to doing like a little Fokker, like a Thor, or any of the, the uh, 100 standard? 100 times easier. 100 times easier. At least 100 times easier. Because no soldering or anything. Yeah, right? no soldering. I installed it with no instructions and no directions. Oh, really? So it was as straightforward as possible. Did it come with directions? No. No directions, okay. <laughs> Live a little. <laughs> yeah, keep in mind, this is maybe not the how it's gonna show up uh, when you buy it retail. This right. is sort of like an early adopters. Uh, it's more of a dev kit type scenario, Yeah, the right? alpha, I think is what they're calling it. I don't know. Oh, we're at least a beta at this beta? point. Beta? Yeah, installing was easy. I was done in 20 minutes. I already had a GT half, half disassembled. So that made it even easier for me. So you put the new drop-in controller in and then you also put in the new BMS, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. And so for the new BMS, is that just to unplug, plug yep. it back a in? Simple, everything is plug in, plug out, plug it in, go. Easy. Yeah. Is the BMS larger or smaller than the stock? The BMS is identically sized to fit in the compartment. Perfect. Yep. The most difficult part would be probably plugging the motor in. The motor connector is, I think, redesigned by Tony. I don't think he had access to that part. Okay. So I think that it was a little tight, but I got it in there. We use our little metal lock ring and now it's on there tight. So pretty straightforward then. It's just yeah. a unbolt the old one, take it out, bolt the new one in. Yeah. It was, put a couple of nuts in. Yep. Three, you're done. three screws. It comes mounted to the aluminum mounting plate. You take out your controller, you put your three screws in that are provided. There you go. That sounds like a pretty easy repair. Yes, 100%.
There you go. So that's how difficult it is from a mechanical standpoint. Let's go talk to Nico about the software side of this thing. So Nico, we just talked to Keaton about the hardware installation process. Then the board was kicked over to you to set up the software on this bad boy. Yes, sir. You've set up a Vesk or two in your days, right? One or two. Yeah, yeah, I figured, I figured. So how was the setup of this particular GTV drop-in kit from a software standpoint compared to like just a normal VESC setup? And how difficult is that do you think is gonna be from the normal person? Yeah, so out of the box, it did actually come fairly pre-configured. Uh, now granted, there were some values that I would have liked to see that were missing. And then between that and just differences, motor and motor, uh, it kind of just made more sense for us to just configure it from scratch. That's not too bad of a process. There's plenty of guides online. There's a whole community to answer questions if you have any. So as long as you're someone that can follow a guide, just like step by step, don't make too many assumptions or anything like that. It's not too bad of a process. Now also keep in mind, this is a prototype. So we don't know, there might be some changes between when this video comes out and later on. There could be community develops that make that setup process just more streamlined and simple in the future. Mm -hmm. So that's just something to keep in mind. How long do you think it's gonna take the average person from a software standpoint after they install it to set it up before they'll be able to ride? As long as you take your time and you're patient with it, just follow guides step by step, most people can probably get it done just within an hour. Okay, so there you go. So we're talking, probably hour and a half, two hours from the time this thing arrives until you're riding? I'd say so. How does this thing actually ride? We haven't even ridden it yet. So I'm pretty stoked. Nico's promised me he's got it set up absolutely perfect and there will be nothing we need to change. It's it should be dialed. Awesome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one out and we're gonna take out the exact same board um, that's just a stock GT just on Future Motion firmware. And we're gonna ride them side by side, sort of compare them, give you our initial thoughts and uh, we'll see you out there. One of these things is not like the other. Come check this out. All right, here's a regular GT when you start it up on the light bar. Pretty normal, pretty standard. Yeah, yeah not bad. All right, here's the GTV drop in. Ooh, Ooh, look at that progress bar. What? So there we go. We got a blue glow instead of a, oh, now we switched over. Boom, boom. Pretty much indistinguishable after the startup sequence, but uh, we're gonna go test these guys out right now over in West Sacramento. That's where all the cool stuff is but we don't want to bore you guys with a ride over there. It's kind of just like a street ride, so. <laughs> oh, I'll never get used to that teleportation. Anyway, here we are, West Sacramento. We're gonna start out with the drag race with these two bad boys. We have the exact two same boards, basically. The only difference is we got a different front foot pad on one of them, and we got the GTV drop-in kit. Right. So I'd say baseline, pretty fair fight. Now, Lige weighs. <laughs> about two or three pounds less than me. That is true. Okay. I don't know how many stone that is, how many kilograms that is, but he's definitely got the advantage on the drag race. However, I'm gonna be on the GTV drop-in. So we're gonna see how this goes. All right. And they call me the whole shot king. So oh, shoot. you gotta All watch right. out, you gotta watch out. All right, Ryan, you might wanna get a little bit of a head start cause we're gonna be cooking. Now, here's the thing, I'm not familiar with this tune at all. All right. I don't yeah, know how fair. Nico set this thing up. <laughs> you know, we're on 555, nimble little tire, nimble little sucker. Right. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see how this goes. I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be good. Three, two, one, go. Oh my God, that thing took off. I'm already hitting pushback. <laughs> and happy to buzz. What fuck? God damn. Oh, you took off. Comfy. You took off. Yeah, 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 it goes. Dude, the second I hit the haptic buzz, I was like, no way, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, but. I don't know what my pushback level is set to. That's what's cool about this kit. You can set your pushback level to whatever speed or duty cycle you want, which is super rad. And then also you can set your haptic buzz to whatever duty cycle you want. Right. So it's super cool. I went 27.3 pretty <laughs> pretty comfortably, but I did hit 90% duty cycle on that one, which is- You were up there. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty fair. You know, yeah. I, I am used to, after riding that 100 volt board the other day, not even it, like what, 76% duty cycle? Yeah, that's at, insane. At 37 <laughs> miles an hour, like, yeah, okay, this is no 100 volt beast. But compared to a standard GT, it seems like it's definitely got a little more get up and go. No doubt, yeah, I only went 25 or 20.5 and that's because the second I hit haptic buzz, I don't know, that, that's like the most unsatisfying feel on a board. It's just me, 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 well, in your tails. It's meant to do <laughs> that. That's the whole point is it's telling yeah. you, stop, stop, oh my God, stop, I can't exactly. take anymore. Let's test a drop real quick, you down? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's hit this drop. Oh, tail drag, classic. Woo! 
Oh, tail drag. It's classic. Classic. You sure are seeing a lot of tail drags there, buddy. What's going on? Dude, I, more, I need to land more front foot heavy, it sounds like. But. Oh, well, that's the problem too. Yeah, with the GT, notorious for tail dragging. Mm. GT does stand for generally tail drag sometimes. Apparently, this has been somewhat corrected or fixed in the GTS with the newest update, but you didn't get that update no. with the GT. So if you want gradient tracking, if you want that less tail drag. And then the uh, chattered nose lift or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, I don't, the nose hunting issue was more of a GTS thing than a GT thing. Okay. So that's not really an issue with the GT. Okay. But yeah, if you want those two features, don't have them in here. Guess what? Vesks barely tail drag compared to future motion boards. Uh, you know, it's a lot more similar to their new GTS update. It's great. Right. And then you also have uh, ATR, which is essentially gradient tracking for the VESC. So I've got both those things, which is pretty sweet. Nice. Yeah. yeah. This, yeah, that tail drag's very noticeable on the drop and the bump. One thing that I am noticing on here, I am getting a lot of dropped connections, but it's probably a hardware issue on this. So it seems like the Bluetooth connection isn't quite as strong on the GTV drop-in kit as it, it has been historically on my uh, Lil Fockers. No Bluetooth, whatever you want to call it. That's a point for future That's motion right there. That's no, a point I'm, for I'm sure. I'm connected the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> future motion wins on that one for sure. Better Bluetooth connectivity than Vesk. I don't think anyone can argue with that one. Yes. Vesk is not notorious for having good Bluetooth connectivity. Hill climb? Hill climb. Hill climbs. Let's go climb some hills. Yeah. One thing I totally forgot to mention, uh, my favorite feature about this GTV drop-in kit, with the stock GT right now, post haptic buzz update, you cannot calibrate the level. So if you put any sort of angled rails on it, like dubs, or steep and deep slow riders, you actually won't be able to level the thing out. And you have to go into custom shaping, put the nose up, and it doesn't really ride the same it's not quite perfect but with the vesk software you can put it at any angle calibration you want so any rails that you have aftermarket stock doesn't matter you can get the thing to ride totally level which is awesome <laughs> this is one that i think will interest a lot of people because what most people have been saying about the gts versus the gt is that the gts just climbs hills like a monster especially at that low speed because that's where it really shines and, and prevails. That's it, it's got that torque. And so I think the GTV is gonna climb a lot better is my estimation here um, for two reasons. One, we're basically like taking the restrictor plate off this bad boy and throwing more juice into the board. Um, so that's gonna help. And then also we have the advantage of having ATR enabled on here. I got it set real mellow, it's just one. Just think gradient tracking. It's basically the same as gradient tracking. So when you're when you're crawling uphill, it's gonna lift that nose and give you more gas. It's not gonna bury that nose into the hill quite as much, so. Cool, and I think we will have to do this each like swap boards because I do weigh like two pounds. Well, sh look, if I beat <laughs> you up this hill, we know something is significantly different, that is, right? That's right? valid. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, this segment brought to you by Liquid Death. It's actually not, uh, we, we bought this one, but I would love to be sponsored by Liquid Death because I drink a lot of water. Sponsor us, please, that'd be great. All right, let's climb some hills. Let's do it. What do you think, just straight up? Just straight up. All right, let's go, three, two, one, go. Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. <laughs> I, I got stuck. <laughs> okay, I felt I felt the ATR pretty significantly on that one. Yeah. I don't if I didn't have ATR enabled, I think it would have been very similar yeah. to the GT because I felt my nose was about to dig in. I even went over this big old ditch right here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Still climbed it. It was all good. So yeah, let me do that. Let me take ATR off of this thing and I don't think I'll be able to make it but only one way to find out. Only one way. Why don't you try real quick just to jam on up there with that? Whoa. Let's see how it goes. All right, let's see. Now keep in mind, we got same tire, same tire pressure, all that stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Billy goats up there, huh? Oh yeah. Look at that thing, just climbing. Just climbing. Ooh. Yeah, that ATR, you feel it kick in, especially like at that low speed when it's yeah. really realizing what it needs to do. Yeah, absolutely. Let me um, let me turn the ATR off and see if we can even make it up there without the ATR. <laughs> I, I doubt we'll be able to. Honestly. I don't think so. And I'll bet you if you had gradient tracking on the GT, it could probably do the same thing. Do very similar. Yeah. I, I hope Future Motion decides to actually update the GT and not just like 
That would be pretty rad. Like, yeah. There's a lot of people out there with GTs. Yeah, and I mean, so it's sure the nice. longer range board. I feel like a lot of people who go and yeah. do these like long trail rides, and specifically like really where that board shines is like you don't want to have to go back midway through your ride and go charge. Yeah, but. be kind of a bummer. People that just bought a GT and they don't get these cool features. Right. But there's a way. There's, there's a, a way. way you could get the cool features right now without waiting on future motion. Yeah. So, all right, jump on in. I turned the ATR completely off. Good oh, luck. let's see. <laughs> Good luck. I'll bet you dollars to donuts you ain't making it. <laughs> all right. Oh, it's still climbing. Oh, though. no way. It's still climbing. No way. It's still climbing. Wow. wow. That was nice. That was really nice. I feel like you could maybe even make it up, honestly. Dude, wait, so do I owe you dollars or donuts? I'll take donuts. <laughs> take donuts? All right. That was actually really impressive that you just made that. No, try because I okay. thought it was going to be significant. I mean, I got to cut all the way I can right bit. now. Felt a little bit of a difference, but it still just pulled me up. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I got to take a little bit of an angle for Fireman. sure. It's oh, climbing. it's Billy Goat and really good. Oh, you're right. It just keeps going. You're right. That's insane. ATR off. Do, do one more on the GT. Maybe you just weren't practiced, you know? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, GT just can't make it. It's like I could, I would be able to if I wasn't trying to, I think, just straight line it. I could go like, if I snaked it at like a tiny bit of an angle, I could get up. But I think one side, if I just go like straight at it compared to that thing, well, that try thing just feels, here, I'll try, try to again, try one watch. more, try one more. Do everything you can to make it up that hill. To get up? Oh, I can. Everything you can. All right, here we go. Oh, she's groaning. Oh, it's Come slippery. on, you got this, you got this. You're not done yet. Not dead yet. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if I didn't, one more. All right, one more. I think one you got more. this. If I didn't slip out right there, I think I'm, I would have it. <laughs> I'm telling you, hard angle, hard <laughs> angle. You got this. All right. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh, it's flashing red. What does your app say? Overcurrent. Oh, getting a little rowdy. Yeah. So just re like. Yeah, just, you should be able to power cycle it and be okay. Here we go. Oh, he's good start, good start. He's up. When's he gonna cut? When's he gonna cut? When's he gonna cut? Oh, okay, he's cutting. Okay. Okay, he got it. <laughs> Took a little bit of effort, but you got it. A little bit of effort. Yeah. But... I gotta say, I did not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tree's gonna attack me. Ah. <laughs> I don't think I gave the Vesk enough credit on that one. Like I thought without any ATR at all and with the playing field being like totally level mm -hmm. that it, it wouldn't have made it just like this one, but right. it climbed a lot more. So it definitely unlocks more torque. Yeah, for sure. It unlocks more speed. It unlocks more torque. Right. Probably at an expense of range potentially, but you'll have to tune in for the range test video for that one. We'll have to see. So this is just basically like, straight drop in repair for your future motion GT that's broken. Right. Like, you're good. We're not talking about upgrading motors. That's true. Crazy stuff. Simple We're, repair. Simple repair. Simple Just repair. drop that controller and BMS in and you're good to go. Yeah. No, I'm impressed. Very it's impressed. freaking sweet. Yeah. Well, let us know what you guys want uh, us to test next, or if you have any other questions about the GTV drop-in kit. No idea when this thing's coming out, but we're hearing potentially like a month or so, so pretty darn soon. So if you have a broken GT that you didn't trade in on the trade-in program, uh, great option, I would say. Definitely makes it ride better, in my opinion. Faster, porkier. Um, I like the turn tilt built into it. I really like the Vesk firmware, just personally. All in all, if you guys are more interested, let us know down in the comments. Uh, when it's available, maybe we'll let you know where to get it. Maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows when it's gonna be available, but it's sweet and I like it, so. Should we try that teleport thing again? Yeah, let's do it. Keep rolling. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't work. It didn't, what are you talking about? <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs>